Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated, and today I want to do a video on uh, replacing keys on MacBooks. Um, really, this is relevant to all Apple laptops up until about 2012. Um, so all white MacBooks, all Unibody Pro MacBooks, probably even iBooks, PowerBooks, things like that. Uh, in 2012, the Retina machines came out, and those are a lot harder to work with. Uh, errors are a lot harder to work with. Uh, th this is all relevant to those machines. It's just that the parts get smaller, more, more frustrating, and um, at that, with those machines, I tend to just replace the whole keyboard instead of bother with this process uh, because it, it does just get so much more frustrating. So anyway, this is a 2010 white unibody MacBook. And to start with, I'll just give you some, some basic elements in terms of like terminology. So uh, you want tweezers. You really want tweezers. Uh, big fat fingers are just not, not good for this kind of thing. So um, get some tweezers. And I apologize for the wobbly camera. The, the arm I'm using to film with just kind of moves a little bit, but that's just how it'll have to be. So anyway, uh, if you pull from the top of a key, you can just, you want to pull quickly. Don't, don't hesitate or the pieces will come apart. Just, just pull it quickly. You'll take the key off like that. You can see the little tabs in here that connect to uh, the tabs inside the key on the scissor mechanism. If you notice, say, one of these four tabs is missing, then that might account for a key kind of wobbly, being wobbly and, and, and loose. Uh, so you want to always make sure that these are uh, intact. To put a key back on, you just press it into place. Sometimes you have to press a corner to, to get every corner to click. So inside the key, you have what's called the scissor mechanism. It's called that because it scissors, as you can see. If you grab it here, you can kind of flip it up. Kind of scissors in the middle. This is where the, the two pieces connect right there. And it's, it's hooks under here. And then it uses, uh, it's the, the pressure of these two pieces pressing outward into these two little metal tabs with holes in them that keeps these uh, sort of suspended. So what you want to do to take this out is press this in and as you can see that that came out and it's not wanting to just pop out so you click it on the other side and there you go. So there you have your scissor mechanism um, and it opens up like that and you can see there's this little area here and to put it back in you want to hook that under the little metal piece there and then I'll grab this with my finger hold it down on that side and then on the top just kind of press it under the little uh, metal tab that has a hole in it so that the little plastic piece goes into that hole and just verify that it, it bounces like it does and that's that and in the center you have uh, the rubber piece I call them plungers other people call them other things um, but what that does obviously you press that in and the, it touches the sensor the sensor is this little electronic sensor in the middle and it triggers the key press so when you put the key on the plunger presses up against the key, holds the scissor mechanism up, you press the key down, it presses the scissor mechanism down, plunger goes down, and a little plastic tab on the inside of the plunger uh, presses onto the sensor. So that's basically how these keys work. Um, it would be very nice if there was only one kind of scissor mechanism. Um, it, life would be good. But unfortunately, there are different styles of scissor mechanism. So um, I'll show you here. The white unibody MacBook has two. And the difference is very subtle. They, they work, they, they function the same, but the difference is, is, is pretty subtle. It's hard to kind of see tell them apart. You can tell this one has a bigger hole here. So it is absolutely critical if you have a keyboard without you know, missing some keys and you need a donor keyboard, you have to make sure that donor keyboard is the same type of keyboard that has the same uh, scissor mechanism. The scissor mechanisms are not interchangeable. Um, 
it would be nice if it was really, really obvious that you're using the wrong one, but it's not. They will go in place. It's just that you'll put the key on and you'll notice that things are just a little strange or the resistance is a little too much or, you know, it's just off by a little bit. So, um, yeah, you want to make sure the scissor mechanisms are the same. Um, the 2007 to 2009 original white MacBook had four different scissor mechanisms. Uh, white unibody has two, and 2008 to 2012 unibody and unibody pros have two. So it's not too bad with the current machines, um, except if you know you don't have a lot of spare keyboards around to, to pull from. But I, I can't stress enough: have to have the same scissor mechanism. Um, a lot of people just can't even look at that and tell the difference. So it's pretty much impossible for them to replace keys. So there's that. Here's one with the other scissor mechanism. You can kind of tell the difference here. Um, smaller keys, by the way, um, same concept. Um, even more important to pay attention to the scissor mechanism because the differences between them are just that much more subtle. So don't think that because this looks exactly like that, that um, it's it's not different because guess what it is different <laughs> uh, even though you can't really tell so um, let's see next I will show you uh, how to uh, replace the plunger um, for whatever reason on a, these mostly I took off but I get thousands of laptops from schools and I'll get say 500 laptops and half of them will have a plunger or two missing, which makes no sense at all. Um, I could take a laptop and run it over with a car 15 times, and not one of these rubber pieces would be missing. Uh, it just takes a really deliberate act um, of, you know, force to to get rid of one of these. It, it's really impressive that you know half the laptops out there would have something missing. Um, you know, and, and I'm not a conspiracy theory, theory guy, but it really gets you thinking, you know, why exactly are half of them missing, you know, a few of these? Um, the kids, I think, are destructive. I think that's part of it. But I honestly, I think some of these school IT people just, I, I think if they, if, if a machine is damaged in such a way that they don't have to process it, I think it's easier for some of them to just put it in the scrap pile. So I think... It sounds cynical, but I think getting rid of one one of these, so they so people can say, oh, it's a it's a bad machine. I think that um, is something. That, um, so anyway, uh, so let's say you're missing one here. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure that if you look around here, like there's still some of the rubber is still missing uh, around the key. And you can't have that because the replacement uh, plunger has to sit flush against um, this 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 area, and it can't be sitting on top of old rubber because it'll hold it too high up, and um, th then all of the mechanics of the key will not work right. So what I do in this case, and this is going to be hard to depict, I take a flathead screwdriver, and you you want to press hard. may or may not be possible to depict. You can see the little pieces coming off. If you don't press hard enough, it won't really happen. It's going to be hard to give you a perfect visual on this, but basically you want to scrape it flat. Basically, when you when you touch like that, you want to feel sort of a, a, a hard metal surface. If it feels kind of rubbery, then there's still a little bit of a layer of... Um, of rubber there, so once you get that flat, then you've got a you've got a clean surface. I'll take out this little piece I removed. All right, so now you've got a surface that's 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 good. You know, make sure the sensor itself is is clean. Um, so now we need to find a um, a donor. So let's say this was a different keyboard here, a scrap keyboard that has the same scissor mechanism, and you want to use this guy right there. 
So what do you do? Oh, and the plungers, too, <laughs> have to be from the same uh, a, a keyboard that, that shares the same scissor mechanism because, believe it or not, these guys can vary per type of keyboard. So take these from a keyboard that has the same scissor mechanism, or you might be sorry. And the plungers in these guys, too, are smaller. So this, this is smaller than this. So if you try and interchange those, you will not have fun. So, same kind of concept, take a flathead screwdriver, and, and I gotta stress, you really have to push, because you have to get under there. And so, basically you wanna just kinda scrape it little by little. Pushing hard. If you don't push hard, it's gonna tear. All right, and I did not do that one well. Because you can see there's a rough edge. But in the interest of time, I'll show you one that I did a good job on. So you can see on this one how there's sort of a white ring along the, uh, the edge there. And that's because I, I pushed it off the key so cleanly that uh, uh, some of the original glue is uh, is still there. And that's what you want, because it means you have a flat surface. Um, if you don't have that, then it's, it means you've, you've torn it. You know, so this can, this can reside, you know, right there. So flat surface on top of flat surface. So what I'll do here is I'll show you the next step. What I do is I put, let's see here, I put the scissor mechanism on first, and it's basically in place. And what I do is I take a piece of, uh, I take a sticky note and I put just the smallest dab of super glue on it. Because you want to glue these in place, but just barely. Um, you don't want to put too much glue on there because you'll wreak havoc. But um, you want enough, just, just the tiniest amount, so that it holds it in place and doesn't move. Um, but that's, that's all. So take the tweezers. grip it like this. What I'll do is just sort of drop it in the little bubble of glue. Pick it up again. And then sort of touch the, uh, the sticky note to get some of the glue off. Because you really, really don't need that much. And then you just place it right in the center. Make sure it's sort of on all sides. Don't have to give it that long, give it like 10 seconds. And I, I have to stress, don't want to use a lot of glue because if you do, then uh, you don't want to risk getting glue on the sensor because that's, that's game over basically. And then once that's in place, you just click the key back on. And you need to test these. <laughs> I, I test them several times. Um, the keys are very fidgety and uh, sometimes you'll think you've got it, but then you go in and um, try it out and it doesn't work. So um, that's basically it. Um, I will show you replacing a few keys sort of at a higher speed, I guess you could say, just so you can get a sense of what it looks like when you, you do this sort of quickly. Um, let me focus the camera here. All right. So I'll do a small one. So wrap it around the thing here. Put it into the tab. Put the key on. Make sure it clicks on both sides. This one just needs a key, so I can go on like that. 
So, number one key. Push the bottom into the part there. These don't have... Oh, I did the wrong one. Whoops. With time, you get good at telling if they're upside down or or not. Obviously, it, it's a little bit tricky to tell, but um, it just takes experience. Sometimes you need to. Um, sometimes you have liquid damage. Sometimes you have to. Uh, I've had keyboards where I've taken all of the keys off, gotten rid of all of the scissor mechanisms and keys, and then replaced them with uh, non-liquid damage scissor, scissor mechanisms and keys. Um, if the scissor mechanism is, is liquid damaged, it's hard to clean them. I don't bother. I just replace the key and the uh, scissor mechanism. If you get that sort of crunchy sound, um, very hard to fix that. Just take the key off, replace the scissor mechanism, um, and that's your best bet. Um, but always test those crunchy keys later, because the more you press them, the less crunchy sounding they, they get, but then 10 minutes later it'll start up again uh, if you haven't replaced everything. So, so there's that. Um, another note about bad keys. Um, People will say stupid things like, oh, if a key's not working, just take the key off and, and clean everything with, with rubbing alcohol and then you'll be fine. Um, that's nonsense. It doesn't work. Um, if you click on a sensor or click on a plunger that is hitting a sensor and you don't get a key, if you don't get a, 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 you know, a response on the computer, that's, that's an electrical problem. That's damage to the uh, sort of the back plane of the keyboard that's behind here. And there's really no fixing that. Uh, at least there's no fixing that in any um, reasonable, cost-effective way. So um, yeah, if a key is not working, if you take this off and, and hit the plunger and it's, it's not doing anything for you, uh, that's a bad keyboard and that's, that's game over. So, um, and keyboards have multiple wires coming out of them and each wire tends to uh, control a strip of keys or, you know, a, an area of the keyboard. So if you have, you know, multiple keys in an area or, or keys in a row that aren't working, that again is, is an indication of, um, you know, an electrical problem that's, that's not going to be fixed. Uh, a long, every long once in a while, you'll have a key that just doesn't work right and it feels a little hard or something and you open it up and the scissor mechanism has come undone and then you can just pop the scissor mechanism back into place or uh, and then you're fine but but the vast 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 majority of bad keyboards are res a result of liquid damage or other things like that and they're just not going to be fixed uh, just last thing here the scissor mechanisms you know they they can come apart um, once they do come apart they're very hard to get back together. You can do it, but it's a question of is this upside down or right side up? I don't know. And it's just a pain. So I would sooner just grab a replacement from a donor keyboard than, than try to sort this out. So that, that will save you some, some time. So anyway, um, I hope this was useful. Um, yeah, I hope you uh, got something out of this. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have questions, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm trying to build this up uh, slowly but surely. And uh, if you want to sell me your computer, go to uh, rdklinc.com. I buy broken MacBooks. I also sell refurbished MacBooks. You can check out my glitch art. Uh, that's about all for the plugs that I can think of. So thanks again.